Okay, so we started off by talking about some character issues and being nicer. Now, we're gonna talk about the action points, the things now that we take what we've learned and put them into action. And the first one is B. Everything begins with prayer. Let's begin with prayer. So Roland, uh, when my son was five years old, he was a mischievous little guy, cute little guy, but mischievous. And one day, it's about dinner time, and my wife's cooking. We've got the grill on, but we didn't put the steaks on yet. And my son's in the backyard, and, and I, I walk from, from, up, from the downstairs, and I, I come into the kitchen, my wife's cooking, and all of a sudden, I see my son running around in circles. I'm like, what's he doing? So my wife walks out there, and his skin was literally bubbling. You see, he attempted to jump over a grill. Now the, grill, the, the steps were here and the grill was lower, so he figured, oh, I can could, I could do this. And he landed right on the grates, just like that. And he got severe burns, literally bubbling, so he's in pain. So my wife screams, call 911, and I do. And I call 911, they come really quickly. I ended up knowing the EMT that came and they took care of him, they put him in to the ambulance and they're gonna take him to the hospital. And now I have two other kids at home. I gotta feed them, I gotta do all this. But when those doors were closing on the ambulance and he's looking at me, he's like, help me dad. And I, I knew exactly what I had to do. I went back in the house, I finished dinner, got the kids ready, I said, look, I gotta go down, then we're gonna go to the hospital. I went down on my computer and I sent prayer requests out to everybody. I knew that the only way the situation was gonna get better was through prayer. We get to the hospital, he is wrapped up like a mummy. The doctor tells us he is gonna have a really difficult night, get ready for it, and it's gonna be a difficult, it's gonna be challenging. We had an appointment at the burn set of the next morning. So we give him a tub and we put him into bed and we expect it to be a long night. He slept through the entire night, never screamed once in pain. And then to blow our minds, we're getting ready to go to the doctor, to, to the specialist, the burn center, and there he is with his hands all wrapped, you can't even see his fingers, and he's riding his scooter. So something unbelievable happened after that. Our neighbor from across the street who lived in this dark, dark house, you never saw him. He slowly walks over. He used to cut his lawn with hand clippers. He was, he was out there. And he walked over and never said really any words to me and he said, he's gonna be okay. Now he didn't even know what happened but I believe that God used him. And my wife went to the doctor with my son that day and they told him he might, use loose, he might lose the use of his hand right here because he had a burn and it would dry, but he's gonna have scarring all over. And my wife said, no, he won't. He will not lose use of his hand. And that prayer network was going. Well, folks, right now my son, as we tape this, is 25 years old, no scars anywhere except for one little micro dot here. And that's the place that they said he was gonna lose use of his hand. But we say to him, that's God showing you. I was there and I answered the call. Prayer is powerful, is it not my brother? Amen, it is, it is. And you know, the interesting thing about prayer is uh, in situations like this where loved ones or others uh, are in trouble, when we run out of trouble, we're gonna lose our job or something, we're quick to go to prayer. And it's necessary, it's important, it's what God wants us to do. Mm. But you know, prayer is about so much more than that. Yeah. Sure it's a, the theologian I work with said, prayer for a Christian should be like breathing. It's like you can go underwater and hold your breath for a while, but at some point you have to come back up and breathe. Mm -hmm. And in a relationship with God as a Christian, yeah, we can skip the prayer a bit for a while, but at some point we need to communicate with God. And at these times when we have a, an emergency, God wants to hear from us. Of course, he wants to help us. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, prayer is much, much more than that. It's, it should be a part of our daily walk. Yeah. And, you know, I looked, when I wrote this book and I did some studies uh, for it in preparation, one of the verses I came across was uh, in Luke chapter 6, verse 12 through 16, which really hit me. Jesus went on the mountainside to pray. He's starting his ministry and he went on the mountainside to pray. And you think, well, you know, okay, he's the son of God, he's going to do that. Well, he goes to pray and when he comes back in the morning, he announces who his disciples are going to be. And I never really, you know, I read, read, you've heard the story, you know, he went and prayed in the morning, he announced his disciples. Okay, it's just a story. But think about it this way. Put it in the business context, in our context. Before Jesus picked his team, he spent time in prayer. Mm -hmm. He didn't just go to the mountainside and pray. He prayed all night. Yeah. And when I was at work, 
uh, or when I'm making decisions for the family, my wife will sometimes say, how do you know? How do you know that's what God wanted? She'll, and then she'll ask this question, which is the killer, almost every time. Did you pray about that? Well, uh, okay, it's a work situation. You know, I went to school. I've got this experience. We take these courses. We got these people. We need to make a decision. Um, you know, God's equipped me to do this. No, I didn't pray about it. And then here's Jesus, Son of God, spending all night to pray before he announces his disciples. Mm -hmm. It's like, ah, yeah, I guess I should probably pray about it. Mm -hmm. That was her, her, her number one question when I'm working and doing things. Do you pray about that? That's good. But prayer is also something that we have to take very seriously and understand that this is a vertical communication with the creator of us. We get to talk to him and he doesn't want us to come to him with babble. Mm -hmm. He wants us to bear our soul. We can't hide anything from God anyway, so why not share our concerns with him Absolutely. as well as our adoration? Wow. You know, we don't, uh, too often we start about us, us, us. We're not being thankful to him for everything that he's done in our, our lives. And I know that in my prayer life, that is paramount to always thank him for everything that he's done for me and everything he's doing for me and ask for forgiveness where I need to be forgiven. But at the same time, asking for that strength from him to overcome the weaknesses that I have. You know, I recently did a study on the Lord's Prayer. And the Lord's Prayer opens, you know, our Father art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. And it's all about God. Mm -hmm. Right, And then there's a little piece, give us our daily bread. Mm -hmm. And that's like, forgive us our sins and keep us away from evil. And when we pray, our prayers are a lot about the give us our bread bit and yeah. less about how great God is, yes. how wonderful his name is, how holy he is, and how we need to be forgiven. But Jesus teaches us that's important. That needs to be in there. And, uh, you know, getting a, this is a, getting a regular prayer life is a difficult thing. Mm -hmm. You know, I was a busy guy through my whole working career. I'm still, I make myself busy, like many of you, make ourselves busy all the time, right? We get up, we have breakfast, we're gonna do this, maybe go to the gym, we're gonna do that, and we get to work, we're gonna do this, and after work, we have this, we have that. We're busy. Well, where's the time for God? Yeah. I couldn't get 15 minutes for God, but I had an hour for the television, I had right. two, two hours for the ball game, right. I had an hour for lunch, but I didn't find time for God. Right. It's so hard to do because, you know, I go to lunch, I eat my food, it's feeding me, it's doing something. When I go to pray, it's sort of a long range thing and it's easy just like, well, I can just go underwater a little longer. I don't mm -hmm. need to pray. Mm -hmm. And what Jesus is showing us, we need to pray. What my wife is asking is, we need to pray. We really need to pray. And so we need to find the time. And one of the things uh, my wife's saintlier than I am, as many of uh, our wives are, and uh, she said to me once that uh, she was at a ladies' Bible study and uh, the, the ladies, when they get older, they have hormonal imbalances and they can't sleep so well. Men, of course, we, can, we don't hear anything. We can, our ears are turned down and we can sleep like logs, which is the blessing, I guess. And uh, so she says to me, she says, uh, you know, I was in the study and the ladies were talking about prayer. Oh, what did they say? Yeah, we're studying a whole book on prayer. Oh, and what did you learn? Well, you know, uh, a lot of us are struggling with uh, sleeping at night and uh, somebody came up with a real practical tip. Oh, I'm into practical tips, that's me, give it to me. Well, when you're awake at night and you can't sleep, pray. What? Yeah, just pray. The devil doesn't want you to draw close to God. Yes. He'll put you to sleep. Yeah. Harness the power. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, and you know, actually in the last year or so, I've been thinking a lot about the Lord's Prayer. When I wake up at night and I think, at, when it's dark, guys, isn't it true? We're so much busier. We have to write all these things down. We have to do this. We have to do, don't forget that. Don't forget that. Oh, it's a problem we can't solve. Things become more difficult and more demanding at night when we're in bed. And that's the time we could draw close. That's the time Jesus prayed at night. Mm -hmm. And we can pray. And if you don't know what to pray, you can just start with the Lord's Prayer. Mm -hmm. And just reflect, our Father, our Father. We're a community of men. We can come right to God who created the whole heaven and earth. Mm -hmm. We could just say, our Father. Mm -hmm. And just go through each stanza of the Lord's Prayer. Mm -hmm. And you know, I often don't make a best of first line. Mm -hmm. By the time I'm trying to do God's will on earth as it is in heaven, I'm like zonked. Mm -hmm. But that's, it. that's okay. Mm -hmm. It's important though. We're here to do God's will. 1 Corinthians 10, verse 31. Everything we do, guys, whether we're at the ball game, whether we're at home, whether we're at work, do it to the glory of God. Mm -hmm. And that's for us to figure out how to do it. But if, you know, if we pray and we listen, we hear the small voice, we'll know. Amen. We'll know. It all begins with prayer. It all begins with prayer. We'll be back. Take your questions now.